welcome to Ask Mo TV. I'm talking today to Dr. Reuben Cannon. Dr. Cannon is a plastic surgeon at the Dr. Chambers Aesthetic Clinic in the UK and London. Hi, Dr. Cannon, how are you? I'm fine, thank you, Joanne, thank you. Dr. Cannon, let's talk today about hair transplant surgery. What is hair loss caused by? Well, hair loss uh, is caused by a variety of uh, causes. It depends on whether it's in a male or a lady. Now, in men, the commonest cause is male pattern baldness, which is, I suppose, in a way, genetic. Uh, it's, it runs through the, uh, the mum side of the family, and uh, there's nothing much that can be done about it. It's, I suppose, a gene factor. The other causes of burns could be trauma, burns, and uh, the other causes commonly seen also is patients who develop, who have uh, radiation therapy or chemotherapy following cancer treatment, they also undergo hair loss. And there's a small variety or a small uh, subset of people who, who have what we call congenital alopecia, which is they're born with baldness, patchy baldness, and that again is a separate etiology. But by far, the commonest etiology is genetic. Uh, there's nothing much that can be done about it. It just happens. It's only a question of time. So if you do look after your hair well, uh, you probably uh, delay that process until much later in life. Otherwise, you may lose it early on. Tell me about the procedure that you do for the actual hair transplant surgery. Well, there are a variety of procedures which have been described, uh, right from, you know, it's a small patch. You can simply excise that narrow ball patch and bring the scalp together. Um, there are people who, who have, for example, burns patients where we can put balloons under the scalp, expand the scalp skin out, and then once we get that extra scalp, we can remove the balloon and then close the skin. That's called a tissue expander, and that's also a technique that we use. However, most of the time in hair transplantation, uh, what we tend to do is uh, what's called follicular unit extraction. Uh, this involves taking hair from one part of your scalp and putting it into the parts which are relatively bare. Now, by and large, I'm talking about male pattern baldness, most of the hair loss is over the crown. So it's the central part of the head and the front of the head. Whereas if you look carefully at the back portions of the head, are usually, the hairs are usually intact over there. And what we then do is we, you know, rub from the back and put it in the front. And this can be done using either instruments which individually deliver each of these follicles and put it into the front, or they can be taken as what we call strips of skin with the scalp and the hair. And in certain patients, in certain procedures, what they do is actually graft it to the front. However, the problem with that is that it gives you an, um, it's a bit like taking one patch of glass from your garden and put it into a ball patch. It looks like a clump, and nothing around it. It doesn't look very well distributed. So the idea with follicular unit extraction techniques is that you take the strip off, individually take out the hair follicles one by one, it's quite tedious, and then put them into the parts of your scalp which are relatively scarce. This is a painstaking procedure, but to get the best possible results, you need to undergo, I suppose, maybe two or three treatments. It shouldn't be done in a rush. It should be taken gradually over time. Now, I think from a social point of view as well, um, with hair loss treatment, hair transplant treatment, you don't want to be uh, appear to, <laughs> to, be, to have a sudden improvement in your hairline. You want to take it gradually over time. So that's why, you know, a little by little, you grow up, you extend the hairline forward, make it less fast, so it's less noticeable as well. Will the results differ from patient to patient and why? Well, it depends uh, on the quality of the scalp that you have. It also depends on the technique that's used. Um, for example, people who smoke, they generally tend to have not as good results. If you, for any reason, were to have an infection of the scalp during the hair transplant process, you could lose uh, a significant number of those hair follicles, which need to grow. 
if, um, if, for example, post-op care, once you put the hair follicles in, you're not really very careful with them, then yes, those hair follicles may not survive. So they have to be given a lot of TLC, tender living care, post-op, and all those factors contribute to the uptake. By and large, you're looking at about 40 to 50 percent of what's been put in to survive. And that process can take up to four months to show itself. Because initially what happens when the, is when the hair tra- is follicles are put in, they will survive, but they will drop. They will drop off. And what's left will be just the bulbs of the hair follicles. So about a month after the procedure, the hair that has been transplanted will be lost. But then over the next four months, they will gradually grow. They'll gradually grow as well. And that's the time you need to be very careful with them, give them, you know, TLC and, and things like that. There are also certain um, medications and creams like minoxidil, which is commercially available, which can also contribute to increasing uh, hair follicle growth during this period. Thank you, Dr. Cannon. Thank you so much for talking to me today. You're welcome.